Welcome to No Apologies on Beck. I am your host, Rick Becker, our lovely co-host, Lori Hintz. Thank you. Another great show for you tonight. We are discussing physicians. Are they left? Are they right? Are they completely independent-minded? Uh, what's been going on with that? We also have an interesting topic, I think, Freedom Force. Well, the Freedom Force versus the squad. Everybody knows about the squad, but they may not know about the Freedom Force until tonight. Yep, and we're going to hit COVID a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But first up, Physicians. All in all, I just assumed that physicians were conservative. I don't know why I felt like they always were when I was younger, but I, I thought this was an interesting topic and very provocative because I thought, well, of course they're conservative, aren't yep, they? Yeah, and that's, I think, what the general... Perception is? I believe so, mm -hmm. and I think that in days of old, they were generally very conservative because they were typically, well, for, for one thing, they were almost all men at one point. Sure. Now, and there is a little bit of a variation if you look at women as a whole and men as a whole. Democrats are a little bit more, more uh, predominant in, in women. But beyond that, there's so much that's changed, I think, in practice. It used to be that you went out, you had an independent practice, you, you, you wrote your name on all the checks. Sure. You, you, you looked at everything. Um, and now it's become so much more corporate. Sure. And you're in the system mm -hmm. that the federal government, the bureaucracy has set up, and you become accustomed to it, and you take for granted that this is what's necessary to provide care. Right. So I think a lot of those things are, um, are, are what's changed. Mm -hmm. Now there's an interesting chart that we found. It says, surgeons are red, psychiatrists are blue. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I took a look at this chart. It goes through the different specialties mm -hmm. and whether that specialty is more likely to be Republican or Democrat, in other oh, words, conservative or liberal. Wow. And I was trying to make heads or tails of it. I think I found a little bit. Okay. Right. So in the bottom, you have uh, infectious disease, especially psychiatry, pediatrics, and geriatrics. Okay. So these are, are physicians that are taking care of people that very much need to be told what to do. They need to have a very paternalistic or maternalistic viewpoint of their patients. Dictated I, to them. Right, and I think that that perhaps colors how they view the role of medicine. If you go to the sure. top, which are more um, conservative or Republican, you have surgery, anesthesia, urology, which is a subspecialty of surgery, ENT, subspecialty of surgery, right, right. radiology, ophthalmology, a subspecialty of surgery. These. People, the people in this specialty are not trying to modulate your behavior. They're not trying to get you to do something as a mom or a dad. They're sure. saying, oh, you have this problem? Okay, I guess I'm going to fix it. That makes perfect sense. Well, that makes that just makes reasonable sense to me. But it's interesting that there's such a disparity between surgeons and, yeah. and geriatric. I mean, it's just, that's shocking. Who'd, who'd have thunk? Yeah. And, and so uh, it's also interesting because when you look at, uh, at least in my perspective, my, mm -hmm. my experience, the people that are on the boards of this and on the boards of that and with, they say, the, the med, their state medical associations, they tend to be people more in the primary care specialties. Sure. Now, I, 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 I don't know if that's their proclivity or if it's because the surgeons in all of their evilness and money hoarding <laughs> are just working the long hours that they don't have the time to serve on the boards. But there is that component as well. Well, and then taking over and leading and dictating things, again, goes hand in hand with that too. But what's interesting is that now more women come into the workforce, and mm. that probably also swings things a little bit more to the left, I'm guessing. It does a little bit. I, it's an interesting Not appreciably? Or well, yeah, I think it does. I think it adds. I just have such a difficult time understanding why the, why the gender difference, in, because conservatism is the most compassionate when you look at the end result. Exactly. If, it do, if intentions aren't what, that, what matters, but the end result are mm -hmm. what matters, conservatism, small government, is the most compassionate because the reason women uh, allegedly are going down that road of Democrat or liberal is because of compassion. But when you look well, at the end result, anyway, so I... That's I, been co-opted. I think that's been co-opted by the left, but I think you're exactly 100% right that the more compassionate is definitely the red. Yeah, I think so. So yeah. there's been an interesting trend. Let's pull up health exec uh, uh, article. There has been a change in the, in the 90s about, if you look, one way of trying to evaluate are, is a specialty or is an industry more liberal or conservative is by how they give their campaign contributions. 
In the 90s, physicians' contributions to Republicans comprised 61% of wow. all contributions. Right. 2018, only, only two decades later, physicians' contributions are now at 67%, but for Democrats. So a complete flip. Complete reversal. Wow. Complete reversal. And I think a lot of that has been where we have headed as a society. And it started, I think, again, in my experience, as a resident with Hillary Care, 1992. Mm -hmm. I went to meetings and I was flabbergasted when I saw fellow physicians. I was a real you know, newbie, young guy. Right. In fact, I think I was a medical student at the time mm -hmm. or a first year resident. And I saw more senior people sort of uh, in, their, in their 40s probably and advocating for you know, government health care for all and all of this and all of that. I, and I was flabbergasted because I thought this leads to a decrease in uh, the quality of care right. in the accessibility of care. Exactly. How can we be for these things? Because on the surface, sure, you're saying you want. So I was flabbergasted, but Hillary Care, I think, is where it started. And then it ramped up with Obamacare. Obamacare, right. right. And in fact, it's interesting. I spent a good amount of time in 2010 um, creating a resolution for the North Dakota uh, Medical Association. It went through, I think there were 40 some whereases. <laughs> I, I, spent, I spent days and days on the river making this thing. Right. So I uh, took it to the state meeting to say, hey, look, Obamacare is not going to be good for North Dakota. And here are the myriad reasons why. It didn't pass. It got voted down, I think, if I remember right, this is back in 2010, eight to five. Oh, so. Eight to five. Keep in mind that the number of physicians is just under a thousand. A number of physicians in the North Dakota Medical Association. But the vote on the resolution was 13, 8 to 5. So it just goes to show that a, an organization's direction of where they're headed politically is maneuvered by a very small minority. At mm -hmm. least it was in this case. Every vote matters. Yes. And speaking of a position which may be held by a minority, but which represents the, the organization as a whole. One of the interesting, I find it really interesting, the American Academy of Pediatrics. Some of the positions they hold, you have to remember, this is, this is the preeminent organization for pediatricians. They very much believe, whether you do or not, you, we have to agree that it is a pretty uh, uh, leftist sort of a position. They believe that adolescents at any age should be able to have abortions without telling their parents. Yikes. 13, 12, it doesn't matter. That is shameful. But um, that the parents have no right to know whatsoever. I think that's a fairly liberal position. If we go to the next yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The American Academy of Pediatricians, Pediatrics, is very much in favor of this whole aspect of doing away with binary definitions of genders and allowing and encouraging prepubescent children to claim a gender which is not what they were born unto. Yes. So I think a very, very it's child leftist abuse. Or, well, I I'm, don't disagree with you. If we go to the next one, as another example of a national organization of physicians, there's guns. Again, you may agree or disagree with uh, restrictions on firearms, but we can all agree that that is the liberal or left position right. is a ban. So this organization recommends a complete uh, uh, a ban to assault weapons. They don't know. They don't Obviously, declare what an assault no, weapon is. is. Nobody right. does. Right. Um, but they do like the, all other regulations, mandatory waiting periods, loopholes, uh, restrictions for guns, bigger background checks. I am having a difficult time making the leap in my mind between physicians and guns. I just I don't think they have anything to do with one another. That's really confusing to yep. me. Yep. Well, it, it goes. It's <laughs> just like when physicians were trying to ban. Um, tanning beds right when they successfully banned the sale of uh, bottle rockets in North Dakota right. I'm gonna go just a, maybe about a minute over I want to hit a couple of, of letters let's hit uh, there's a letter to the editor from a group of physicians and we can pop up to the highlighted the, the what they're doing in this letter to the editor is thanking uh, Governor Burgum for presenting the mandates that he did. And what they say is if we all step up to make these sacrifices together now, we can hope for a flattening of the curve within two inc incubation cycles or about four weeks. <laughs> four weeks. That's a, Eight so months later. Go ahead and flip to the list later. of names. I have a list of names of the people signed. This is a public list. I'm not putting this up for them to be harassed. I absolutely don't want any harassment. But if, if any of you physicians on the list are watching or if you know of any of these physicians, give them a call. I would love to have them on the show. 
I would love for us to be able to have an intelligent discussion of why they feel that now one month is all it will take and will be, it'll be taken care of. That doesn't make sense to me. If we flip to the second letter very quickly and go to the highlighted portion, there's a second letter from the American Academy of Pediatrics, the organization we just were looking at. They, they are saying the mask mandate is working. We here at No Apologies are going to show you why, why it's not working relative to South Dakota. What these people have done, though, is they're intentionally mixing data to confuse you. I have a problem with that because that's not intellectually honest. They're pointing to mortality rate, which has nothing to do with mask mandates, and they're also cherry picking days. A, a day or two before or after they put this out, the mortality rates were the same. They change all of the time. Right. So, and let's put out the list of these physicians. Now, they're supposed to be pediatricians. I don't know why there are several on here that are not pediatricians. But again, I say to you if, you, if you see yourself on this list or if you see your physician on this list, please let them know. I would love to have them on the show. I'd like to have a good discussion, no antagonism. Let me know ahead of time what, what three or four uh, um, studies you're are supporting your position, and we can talk about them together, uh, and we can do it in a civil manner. This is such an interesting topic too. Yeah. I'm just I'm shocked actually with the information that you presented here. It, I mean, it's a lot. It is. It's a lot. So with that, um, we are going to take a break. Be right back. We'll have some more interesting stuff for you. Howdy, folks. It's the Canaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Canaline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers for your years of continued support. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Is your business phone system outdated and expensive to maintain? Most large VoIP companies leave you on hold or struggling through online support and training for your employees. With Beck Connect, you always have fast, friendly, local support. Familiar faces with the know-how to keep you connected. Take advantage of the newest technology and voice calling, video conferencing, and virtual meeting rooms. Beck Connect gives you all the features you need with no upfront investment and no obsolete hardware or software ever again. Simplify your communications. Choose local. Choose Beck Connect. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. So I kind of crammed a lot into that last one. 
So we can go a little bit slower yeah, and break I've it down. I've asked the a producers bit. to allow us to maybe <laughs> just in touch touch on that a little bit a little bit more. So we covered that aspect where physicians do have they're they're human beings, of course. Right. They do have a political bias in general, a tendency. They have, as we saw in the specialty breakdown, perhaps a worldview. Right. And there are some specialties that it would seem to me that their worldview is perhaps somewhat dictated by the specialty they're in. Perhaps was it the chicken or the egg? We don't know. But the point is they have a worldview. When you were talking about physicians, I was thinking about other careers, too. And in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, what other careers are more conservative? What are more liberal? Obviously, the media is very, very biased, like 99% to 1% uh, liberal versus conservative. But mm. I was really surprised to see that physicians had flipped in that way. That's just, it's just amazing to me that it went from what I thought it was, which was conservatives, mm -hmm. to more liberals recently. And it makes perfect sense once I look at mask mandates, once I look at uh, the power involved with what's going on with the COVID uh, reaction right now. It makes perfect sense to me that things have gone more liberal because it's dictating, it is uh, controlling, and the power involved with it. Yep, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And then the, to know that physicians are, are individuals, again, with their own worldview, right. and with uh, uh, as one part in an organization which in itself may represent something much different than what a good part of the membership believes. Right. As I indicated with the North Dakota Medical Association back in 2010, where uh, you know, there was a, basically a support for Obamacare, if you will. It was mm -hmm. kind of a complicit sort of just as an COVID aside, support. honestly, when Obamacare was signed, we came back from a convention that night, and it was on a uh, March evening, and we came home, and we watched the vote, mm -hmm. and I literally cried. I'm not the type of person to cry over a vote like that, yeah. but I knew what it was going to mean to the country and what it was going to mean to the medical, uh, the, um, the whole medical system, and I knew it was going to be something that was going to be almost impossible to turn back once it happened. So I actually... <laughs> I, did you? I did. I cried when Obamacare passed yeah. because I knew the catastrophic effect it was going to have on yeah. health care, and it has. It, I, well, it made me angry because I knew that it passed. Well, how it passed, mm -hmm. which that, that whole thing is worth like five segments. Agreed. But for some reason, I was focused on uh, Norm, is it Coleman? Norm Coleman, yep, from in Minnesota, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. where, they, where they kept recounting until he lost, and then that was the vote. Um, Another aspect I wanted to hit on, because I, again, I kind of rushed through it, I, and it's important enough. One of the letters that, that I, we brought up that was sent to the uh, editor uh, indicated that, you know, thanks, North Dakota. Thank you, Governor Burgum. If we all just do this together, all it's going to take is a sacrifice of two more incubation cycles, in other words, four more weeks. And again, my position on that is where, where do you have the supporting data for that? Because we have, we have a lady, but we might bring it up uh, soon, it was in, in, in Mail Bay or something, but uh -huh. we have a lady saying, Cali you guys are crazy, California's been under mandates for nine months. Right. Nine, nine months. months? That's not four weeks. Right. Uh, Absolutely. And the other thing is, if you look at the first letter that I just indicated, they, they say one month. The very next letter that comes out about two weeks later says, awesome job, Governor Burgum. Please extend it past the four weeks for another eight or nine weeks to make a total of 13 weeks and possibly longer. So which one is it? It's biased. It's misleading. Is it, is it, is yeah. it four weeks? Yes. Is it 13 weeks? According to California, it's, it's nine 13 months. months. Right, right. So I want to bring up uh, one more time. Bring up that list, please, if you will, of the, uh, we'll, we'll flip through the first, the first list of physicians. Again, do not, th these are high quality people. Thank you very much. And, and the, the, the people there, I respect. I know many of them. Um, this is not in any way to try and, and cause them issues. I'm inviting them and I encourage our, our viewers to contact them if, if you know of any of them. I'd love to have them on because again, as we say over and over on this show, we care about the truth. Dr. Joshua Wynn, the last one on the list, I literally had a Zoom meeting with him today mm -hmm. discussing cycle thresholds for the PCR tests. Well, um, Good people. The thing is, I want to have an intellectual discussion, a debate that our viewers can see. 
Let's bring up the next list. And we'd like to make an invitation to it. Just because you're on this list doesn't mean that we're trying to target you. What we're simply saying is that we would really, really like you to come and explain it to us. It would be a great right. help to well, our and, viewers. And too. I think I think a, a, a bit of, of a, an intellectual challenge would be good. I mean, right. that's what we need. That's the scientific method that you and I discussed previously on the show. Exactly. Tell me what three studies or four studies you want that will support your position, and I'll take a look and we can discuss it. And and we can discuss it in a civil, friendly manner. You know, a couple of the, the folks on this list, uh, you know, boy, they're, they're pretty easy to throw out personal attacks on Facebook. So in particular, I'll invite Vanessa, who, uh, <laughs> who indicated that, she, that my license should be revoked. Hey, instead of doing that stuff on, on Facebook and trolling, come on the show. And, and talk with me. Talk with me and Lori. We'll, we'll, we'll figure things out. That's what it's for. And, and, get, get and it's going to be good for the viewers. It's going to be good for North Dakota. It is. So. All right. Next up, we're going to talk about Alrighty. a little different kind of a war. This is between the squad and the Freedom Force. And we'll be back with that in just a moment. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers, for your years of continued support. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. Uh, we have got some really interesting stuff for you. Uh, People next... may have heard of the, the squad. 
Yes. I mean, everyone has oh, probably heard of the squad, and like, we really don't even want to hear about the squad anymore. But people probably have not heard about the new Freedom Force, which uh, came two years later in Congress. So the House members on the squad, so that you are aware, um, those are the Freedom Force members up there. So this is the new Freedom Force. So they are the, they are the antithesis and the opposite, and they are the um, going to be the defenders of, of the Republican values against the squad. And I think it's interesting that there are more Freedom Force members than there are, of course, of the squad. Now, the thing about the Freedom Force members is that they're going against these four ladies, which people have probably seen Ooh. before, too. And we'll go back to the, we will go back to the Freedom Force in a minute, but first, let's, all right, they're way ahead of me. Okay, cool. So the, the Freedom Force members here have been kind of, um, They've, they've started a couple of different ways. You can, you can see that Salazar is up there from Florida, and she kind of decided, intimated, and started the whole thing. But then Burgess Owens kind of co-opted it, too. Now, Burgess Owens is an amazing human being. Mm -hmm. He is a great, he's a f former NFLer, obviously former Super Bowl champion. And Burgess Owens uh, is, these are all uh, members elect to the Congress right now from the 2020 election. So you've got Michelle Steele from California. You've got a, a couple of them uh, from California with Young Kim and Michelle Steele, and then you've got a couple of them from Florida then as well. Uh, so you've got Donalds, and then you've also got this uh, Salazar. Now Salazar is really interesting in that she has parents who have been oppressed and were under Castro's regime. So she knows all about socialism, and she couldn't be any more against it mm -hmm. uh, for any reason. Then you've got uh, another one from Oklahoma, you've got New York, and you can see it's kind of a diverse group too. So it's kind of an answer. Now we're, if we could go back to the squad. The squad, you may be aware, is made of, of, all right, I'm going to go from left to right. So it's Rashida Tlaib. Then you've got from Minnesota, Ilan Omar. You've got um, AOC, otherwise known as, AKA uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And then you've got uh, Ayanna Presley. So they come out and they are all over the Green New Deal, mm -hmm. which is nightmarish and ridiculous. And I can't even imagine what it would do to transportation. I just can't fathom. But uh, they are pushing their socialist agenda down hard, and they are the hard left of the party. They are the ones who are pushing this very hard left um, and moving their party in that direction. Some have said that AOC is running things, hmm. which is terrifying. Um, so, Which means that the handlers of AOC are running this. Well, right, even She's worse, because she is not capable. You're right. You what, a bartender at one point? Not, not that I'm disparaging bartenders, mind you, but she came out of nowhere, much like Obama right. did, and then, you know, took off. So now we have decided in Congress that the Republicans are going to have this freedom force, and they are going to uh, be, just be the antithesis yeah. and be the opposite of it. You know what I find interesting is this is such... I think a classic representation of the, the two different ideals. Right. You have, uh, in each case, a group of relatively young people. They're a diverse group, which for me, I don't care what color or whatever, but the point is that they're a diverse group of people uh, that have an ideal. They're clearly going for something that they believe in. They're not there because they're retired and need a job. Um, and what you have is one group of people, who the squad, who sees themselves as being oppressed and victims, or more importantly, they see their constituents as being victims who are oppressed, who their, their constituents need them and need that party right. to pull them out. Because without them, without the party, the people have no hope because they are victims. And that victim mentality is just pounded into them, pounded into them. You deserve this, you are owed that, these are bad people. And you take that, Throw it on, throw it on, throw it on its head <laughs> with the freedom force, and you have an equally diverse group of people, relatively young people, and they say, "We have come also from some difficult backgrounds, but we believe in allowing a person to maximize their potential by keeping government out of the way. We believe in the dignity of the individual. We believe in the power of the individual, not the dependence of the individual. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It is. I, I think these two groups of people display for us in all its glory what it is that, that we're fighting for 
in the United States at this time. Exactly. Maria Elvira Salazar, who we were talking about from Florida, had a tweet and she says, I was born in Miami, a community built by survivors. She said, my parents fled Castro's socialist nightmare. We can't just let the socialist left destroy the American dream for our children. Join the Freedom Force and fight back today. I yep. love that so much because their rallying cry is freedom and just completely the opposite of the whole um, Green New Deal and dependence and socialist agenda so right the freedom force doesn't need the boogeyman <laughs> to try and coerce their constituents to come to and, and request aid exactly it's it's all about the power of the individual and i i i'm, I'm just very very excited about it now i'll tell you what i am uh, going to be watching this freedom force right. odds are that two years from now they're not going to deserve to still be in the freedom force <gasps> That's the nature. It's the nature of the business. <laughs> well, I mean, and you would think that the squad would have dissipated a little. By the way, the reason that they're called the squad was mm -hmm. because AOC met some of these other freshman legislative women, and they got together and they did a picture, and she posted it on Instagram, and she titled it The Squad, the and squad. they've been called that ever since from the Instagram right. post. So. Well, I'm crossing my fingers. I have every hope that the Freedom Force will remain intact and grow. I, I, I hope it grows right? tremendously. But, but history shows that the frailty of the human condition to drop ideals and drop principles for power is there. So um, it's going to be important for the constituents of each of these members of the Freedom Force to hold their members feet to the fire exactly. and may, make sure that they, they stay true. Well, they have a pretty good um, fire in their belly right now. And I love Burgess Owens. If you ever get to see him speak, take that opportunity because he is, he's terrific and he's very grounded and he's very freedom loving. And I hope that he does not disappoint us, as you say, and go by the wayside. I have, I have high hopes for this new freshman class. Yeah, I do. I do. I do as well. It was interesting that the, um, there's all, there's so much stuff about the squad. They have a celebrity status. Right. The Freedom Force, not so much. Very difficult to find information on the Freedom Force. Now, granted, they're new. Right. <laughs> but it will be interesting on whether the ce celebrity sort of status is squashed down mm -hmm. if they're diminished, their significance in the Congress is, is squashed and down. And to be fair, it's a larger group, so it's going to be harder for them to get as much airtime anyway because there's eight or nine of them in the uh, Freedom Force, but there's only four in the squad. And the, the four in the squad are some of the more radical and some of the things that the, the people in the squad have said are just disgusting. Uh, yeah. Ilan Omar, particularly, her, her hate speech is just horrendous. Rashida Tlaib. Tlaib, well, yeah. I mean, just, it's hideous. See, the thing is, their, their celebrity is built by the media. Right. It truly is. Right. What they have to say is fairly vacuous. You know, it's like, I, I watched early interviews with AOC, and it's like, wow, <laughs> did you really get a degree? Vapid. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, and so they're, they're, it's, it's entirely a, a thing built and created by the media because it sells airtime. Right. And my, you know, the concern course, is, it's, yeah. is it going to sell airtime to build up the Freedom Force? Probably not, because they're not going to be talking about crazy extremist things that make you freak out. They're going to be talking <laughs> about boring things like liberty and freedom and human dignity. You know, those boring things. Super boring. <laughs> anyway, we'll look forward to great things from the Freedom Force. We'll see what we can get from them. But I'm, I'm personally very excited about it because I think in addition to that Freedom Force, there are so many new congressmen and women. We've got 14 new women in the Congress. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal on the Republican side. And so I have very, very high hopes for them, and um, particularly uh, the Maria Elvira Salazar's of the world. And she's great. If you get a, go see, a, go watch a clip on her too. She's, she's the real deal. Yeah. So. It'll be fun. Okay. All right. Well, join us next time on No Apologies. We're going to be doing a little comparison of what's happening. No, 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 no. We're doing mailbag next, darling. Oh. Yeah, well, we're doing mailbag you. because I've been looking forward to I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have been looking forward to mailbag the whole show. Okay, Lori's going to force me to stay here with you guys. We're going <laughs> to we're going to do some mailbag. Who knows? Maybe we'll be here all night. It feels like we should go home. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Bismarck Central 4800. 4800, go ahead. Requesting social services on call team. 
standby. 4800 Social Services requesting additional information. You can advise Social Services that we have an 18-month-old female who was in a residence with a mother now being transported to medical care for overdose. Trusting your digital life to faceless tech giants can be risky. Will they keep your family and business information truly safe from prying eyes? If you subscribe to local Beck Lightband Internet Service, you already have Beck Cloud Backup. Beck Cloud Backup is the safest, most private cloud storage for all your family memories, schoolwork, and business documents. Call 701-475-2361 to start using your free space on Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. Howdy folks, it's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline Burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Welcome back to No Apologies. Sorry I was so bossy about that, but yes, I do I, love me some mailbag. I just think it's really fun. If I have to stay here, you have to stay here. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna, we're gonna- Mailbag. What we did is we took some comments that we got from Facebook and we decided to show them to everybody so that they could see what kind of feedback we're getting here. And some of it's good and some of it's not so good, but it's all fair because everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. So we're totally good with that. So let's pop up our first one on the screen and see what we say here. So do you wanna read it? And yeah, we've been living in California with masks eight to nine months with numerous lockdowns and restrictions. This attitude is the reason why in North Dakota, one in eight have died. The ignorance is overwhelming. Well, that's an interesting phrase to end with because one in eight have died? One in eight people in the state? One in eight what's have died? Is that, I don't think that's correct. No. Okay. No, and so this, I, I referenced this earlier. So, it's, so there's so many things on with this, this comment. One, she's indicating that because we haven't had lockdowns, because you and I are not in favor of lockdowns, right. we are the reason why North Dakota has allegedly a high mortality rate. It's interesting because she indicates in California they've had the lockdowns for eight to nine months. <laughs> but if you look at the data, right. we're coming down, our mortality is starting to decrease, right. their mortality is coming up after eight to nine months. The other thing is she says one in eight, and I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. It's one in 800 is what came up on one of the ah, national articles. So it was a typo, Dakota. we're gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. And also right. on the bottom, I love Michael Eckley's comment. That was fantastic. It's a, that's a good old fashioned debunking right there. The uh, mortality rates he's talking about there, 1.2% in California with a mortality rate at 1.5%. And the, I, just, I just love it when, Listeners or viewers come back in and yeah. they give you the facts right there. You're so. right. You know what? I, 
I didn't need to say anything. Michael Eckley, in all his brilliance, said it for me. And that's, that's the wonderful thing about having an, an uncensored media. And a brilliant viewership. Yes. When you have really smart people who are watching the program, then they weigh in on those things. You gotta love that too. Right. So, all, right, all right, let's move on to the next one. The next one basically calls us a lame, lame sophomoric. sophomoric. <laughs> lame sophomoric. That is not, Rebecca, not the first time that I've been told that. That you were, that you were lame, lame and, and sophomoric? sophomoric yes. Well, I would, uh, to be fair, we've only done this show for a week, not even a total week mm -hmm. yet. So I would call us more of fresh manic rather than sophomoric. <laughs> I'm not certain that we have actually gotten to the sophomore year yet of our, of our program. I yep. think we're still in the freshman yeah, so. Yeah. But she said it's built around extremist propaganda, oh. hard pass, which is fine. I mean, Rebecca, that's fine, move on. Everyone should just watch what they want. No one's, no one's compelling you to watch. However, the, the, the word propaganda, I will challenge you on because I know it's something you disagree with, mm -hmm. but everything we're saying, we are trying to support to our very best that it's based on fact, based on science, based on whatever it is, it's not propaganda. There's no one, there's no sort of um, um, towing the line that we are using for the purpose of propaganda. Exactly. It's, we're just saying what, the, how it is. You may disagree with it, and respectfully, that's okay. Yes, move on. it's okay, moving on. Speaking of moving on, let's move to the next one. All right, this one is my favorite. It's just, she just says, gross. 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 I kind of use that a lot when I was in high school. I used that term when I was about 18 years old. I've not used gross for a long time. Gross. So she could be talking about a weight measure. I don't I know. I still use it. I still use gross. Do you a use bit. gross? Yeah. All like right. 144 then, bottle rockets. And then the next one we have talks about Saturday Night Live material. Now, this could be taken a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Personally, if it was the current Saturday Night Live, that may be an insult. But I loved Saturday Night Live in the Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd and Gilda Radner and John Belushi era. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that if that is a compliment because I think that they were hilarious and amazing and I started having really great memories of the really, really good Saturday Night Lives that I saw when it was actually a really good show. So. Yeah, I stopped watching. I watched it from, I, I think it was 1977. I forget, what, that might, probably was the first year. I mm -hmm. watched it when I was in, from junior high up right. until just the last couple of years. I just couldn't take it anymore. I can't, well, I haven't watched it for probably just, closer to eight years now. Yeah. But I really like the Lorraine Newman era. I really like the Dan Aykroyd, and I loved me some Jim Belushi. He was funny. I watched the video the other night of Jim Belushi with Joe Cocker singing, and it was just priceless. Yeah. So great stuff. That oh, was yeah. good. So thank you very much for the compliment on that one. Uh, this is actually four thumbs down. Like literally, not just you with your two thumbs, but you and your spouse with four thumbs down. So the both of you watching are four thumbs oh, down. So that is subtle. Spouse. I took it as the big toes on her feet. Oh. Two thumbs, two big toes is the way I, I didn't even So that's a, a misinterpreted. I apologize. Uh, uh, yeah, that's bad on my part. And that Angie. was so nice because it was subtle. I was really good with it. And this one just, we just put this one up simply because this wins the award for the best fake name on Facebook that I have seen in a really long time. It's just fun to say sassafras, sass mouth. So awesome on you. And that picture, epic. Yeah, Very sassafras, nice. sass mouth. I like that a lot. I don't know, uh, the, what, what Sassafras posted there was, was like, don't want to hear about cancel culture and snowflakes and stuff. Certainly you're not going to hear anything about that from us. Um, you know, we, we take it as it is. We'll take the hard knocks. Um, and that doesn't change the fact that there is still a huge cancel culture out there. Yep. And that there are a heck of a lot of snowflakes out there <laughs> that, can't, that, that don't want to be bothered to hear anything that they disagree with for fear that it might cause them a little bit of anxiety. Well, I think it's interesting too that that the naysayers who are watching the show are, you know, they're actually talking about what we're talking about on here. Mm -hmm. So they're watching. So that makes me happy too. Right. So it's all good. I I don't take any I don't take umbrage at any of the criticism at all because right. uh, it will only make us better. It'll make yeah. us better. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, please keep posting Email us, uh, do whatever it takes, get your voice out there. We want to hear from you. We're next talking about COVID. Next up, we are not leaving. We're going to talk about COVID. Right. Be right back.
You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Howdy folks, it's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hot meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We've got one more segment left for you tonight. You know, I think people are probably tired of hearing about COVID. There is so much COVID fatigue, and I get that. But the truth is, is that we do have to talk about it because there are things that you and I have spoken about on this program already. And we probably need to go back to the beginning and explain from where we come. Right. You, you, exactly right, Laura. You're going to be hearing from us in future shows. It's not going to be all about COVID, but I, certainly you're going to hear about it a few times a week because it's affecting our lives day after day and week after week. And there will be new stuff coming up. So we don't want to, you know, inundate you with it, but we do want to keep you abreast of what's happening. What occurred to Lori and I is that we haven't really indicated to you, our viewers, with this new show, where our positions are. What is our starting point so that you understand? Uh, first, we've already explained that we believe very much in facts. So we want to base it on facts. We don't come to the table with the preconceived notion that X is X and Y is Y. We want to see that bear out scientifically. Um, so first, let's yes. talk a little bit about government intervention, because this is right. the strangest thing to occur that I can think of with regard to a pandemic that the government has completely taken over. I mean, this is something that has, in my lifetime, I don't recall ever happening before. Even in the, the previous SARS or Ebola outbreaks, I don't remember it being a complete and utter takeover like this one was. Yeah. So this is, this is unprecedented. And uh, <laughs> we have to ask ourselves, first, is it, is it proper for government to have this kind of a role? Now, for some people, they'd say absolutely, and others might say absolutely not. Um, but for many people, they would say, well, you know, it's kind of a middle area. As long as they are doing good and saving lives, um, then maybe I'm okay with it. Now, I might be more on the no end, 
But I think that for the people that are in that middle, they need to ask, we need to ask the second question, which is, okay, if the government intervention is okay, if it's working, is it working? Right. Is it working? Is it really in reality working? And the other thing is, is the fact that we've actually given up so much of our liberty and freedom to the government so willingly is exceedingly disturbing to me. I'm very, very worried about that because it just seems like all of a sudden I am willing to do whatever the government says. And I don't recall in my lifetime being that person before. And it was, it was shocking to me that I was, you know, complying Yes. to things so easily too. My right. husband back in, I want to say it was February, was m meeting with some people, he was talking about them, and he was explaining how shocked he was that the huge cruise ship of people who had contracted this disease were taken off against their will and put into quarantine. He said it was like putting them on trains. He mm -hmm. said, and they willingly went and did that. And to me, that was a very much sign of the times in the beginning, how people complied with yep. the government's dictates exactly. for this. And it started off with a, with a narrative of fear. Right. The, the media built it up tremendously. Again, not that the media is inherently evil, but the media is inherently going to do whatever brings in the bucks. And the bucks surround, are surrounded with fear because fear brings viewers. So it started off with fear and then people bought into that. And this COVID was supposed to allegedly have a mortality rate of six, 8%, something like that, which would be Nowhere, yeah, horrendous. that would be catas yeah, catastrophic. And instead it's more, it's more like you know, 0.2 or 0.3% of something of that nature. So it started off with fear. Because of that fear, people bought into it temporarily. We heard about 14 days to slow the curve. So then people are like, well, I guess that's okay. It's that ever slow progression. It's called incrementalism. And yes. this is over the, over the time that COVID has been here over what, 10 months now? Yeah. Uh, it, it's the incrementalism is apparent. Now we can look at it. The, the thing that happened next, of course, was the mass testing. Right. Mass testing, I think, needed to be questioned from the beginning. Why mass testing? We had people, the, the, the majority of people tested are asymptomatic. There's many questions that arise around whether they should have been tested in the first place, what it means for them to be positive. Is it something that they can transmit? We don't, we still don't know. And then there's contact tracing. Millions and millions of dollars and man hours were spent on can contact tracing. We had apps that were downloaded onto our phones automatically without our permission right. to be able to do contact tracing. And the whole idea was that this was going to save lives. What has happened in North Dakota in particular, we shifted from having our National Guard working day and night, those poor people doing contact tracing. It was the most important thing, Governor Burgum said, to save lives, slow the spread. Where's contact tracing now? It's gone. They're not doing it. In the height of this disease over the last month, where we've had more cases and higher mortality, we're not doing contact tracing. Contact tracing now consists of a phone call. Hey, you're positive. Make sure you contact the people that you've been around. Why didn't we save the millions of dollars and do that from the beginning? Because we were fed something that turned out to not be true. Great question. And then, of course, from the contact, well, we went from mass testing to contact tracing to now mask mandates. And this is where I have an issue, because when you mandate something like this that is going to impede my freedom, I have a difficult time with that. Now, do you wear a mask? I'm totally good with that. If you feel like you need to protect yourself, I'm fine with that. And I'm, I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to you know, disparage you for wearing your mask. I think that's a smart thing for you to protect yourself. However, if you mandate to me that I must comply with some sort of a, an edict, I'm gonna have a hard time with that. Right, and the thing is that the, the mask is where most of the um, vitriol comes from. Right. Because masks have a limited amount on which they can work. They do work, they're, they're a spit shield. Right. And, and we're gonna talk about that in a future show. I'm gonna show a, a Mayo study. They work to a degree, but they're not the magic bullet. They perhaps do not work any better than if you cough or sneeze to the inside of your elbow, right. literally. Right. But yet there's this whole crazy narrative. And so the thing is we have to, what we referred to previously in, a, in an earlier show is look at the scientific method, look for the truth and, and do what we can to then make policy based on the truth. So we just, Lori and I wanted to hit that up one last time for you. As we move on to additional shows, that's our premise. That's our starting point is to say, we're not so sure that this government intervention is really doing what they allege it's doing. The evidence isn't there. Right. Exactly. So.
So thanks. Well, that was a good that was a good way to finish today. So bring it all home. Yeah, right. So next, what we will be talking about on the next show is we will be talking a little bit about North Dakota versus South Dakota. Back to COVID again. Next up on <laughs> Beck is No Filter with Debbie. We'll see you back.